Alrighty guys, it is 6.55 a.m. in the morning. We have officially completed the 10 and a half hour drive yesterday as you saw in the last episode. So this episode is gonna be pretty epic. This is day one, the start of doing the framework on the Volkswagen Golf R. It's gonna be crazy. We're driving right now, Sean and I, to the shop. And um, I guess we'll see what's in store, but we gotta get there bright and early as there is gonna be a lot to do. It's going to be pretty epic. Yep, you heard that right. In the last episode, I drove across the country from Fort Myers, Florida, all the way to Chattanooga, Tennessee, in order to meet up with the one and only 23rd Garage. As you guys know, I was stuck waiting on a vital part of the car that was backordered to come in the mail, and without it, it would be literally impossible to continue this rebuild. Fortunately, though, it finally arrived at the dealer, and that means it's time for the real work to begin. Tell us a little bit about the car and about how you got into starting your own YouTube rebuilding channel. It's a lot to take in. 2017 Volkswagen Golf R. Bought it in Copart from Georgia. Had it shipped down to Florida. Yo, let me grab another battery. Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. I know we've been gone for a while, but we are back today. And we are back in the shop today with my friend Hayden Schreier. Hayden is actually a original bona fide Florida man. And he is here with his Golf R. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on? Kind of bit off a little bit more than I can chew. If you've watched my channel, you'd know that I've been pushing this off till the end, doing what I can do, getting the small problems done first, working my way up to the big ones. And there's no way I can do some of this framework. So I had to find somebody that knew what they were doing. And 23rd Garage was here to help me out. And we're gonna try to, to get this thing up and running. It's uh, probably 80% done. The front's done, the inside's done, the airbags are done, everything is good to go. It's just a little bit of the rear end here, which we're gonna get done today, or a day or two, and get it on the road finally. Heck yeah, sounds good, man. So what we are going to do, we are going to start by removing the side skirts off the sides here, and put it up on the clamps and then we will open up the lid and take the bumper off and show you guys what's actually going on under there. With Yuri leading the way, we started off by removing the side skirts on the car. This is so we would have enough room to place the frame machine pinch weld clamps securely to the car. And I believe there's only two screws holding these side skirts on on either side and then it's just some double-sided tape that holds it to the car. And we did this to the other side of the car as well. What? A gold? No way. <laughs> Bro. It might help a little bit, no? Bro. That's awesome, man. I appreciate that. And I love the wrapping. The wrapping yeah, is I the, wanted to keep it original. The wrapping know? is the cherry on top. It's that Burger King coupons on that, too. On the other side. Oh, too uh, early. Yeah. Anyways, now it's time to get the car securely fastened to the frame machine using those pinch weld clamps I spoke about earlier. This is to make sure that the car doesn't go anywhere it's not supposed to while it's being pulled. After the eBay extravaganza, now I gotta check everything. Check it twice. And, then the and just when I thought everything was going well and according to plan, this happens. Again, eBay, I got it for like 200. Chip. Oh really? Yeah. That's just pretty cheap. Find them all, you know, instead of going straight to the dealer, check eBay, send in offers, you know. We got more stuff. So is this an OEM part? Or yes, it's it? OEM. This is Volkswagen. Selling for a head So everything's around. exact. I just kind of stick with it because I know non-OEM stuff might not always be a line straight. That's what people, people who do bad framework say. We got an issue. What? what? This is just one piece of it. What do you mean? This is just one part of the rear wall. That's the rear wall, no? What else is missing? It's missing the actual... Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, we're missing the outer skin. Yeah, I messed up. As you can see by the Volkswagen parts diagram, I only ordered number one in the photo, which I thought was the only piece I needed. Turns out I needed number 10 as well. I guess it just didn't look clear to me in the photos as something that was, was needed for this build. I had over a month and a half to prepare for these next three days, and I didn't get it. This isn't good. No, I see, I just looked it up on, on the parts and I ordered it, but 
Yeah, so when, when you get a rear wall from a dealership, you have to get it in two pieces. I had no idea. Because they sandwich. So this one comes in from the inside, and then this one comes in from the outside. And I believe you only have the inside section. Yeah, you see? You see how this is not boxed in? There should be another there should be another piece that goes right here. Yeah, it like welds on around here. And it boxes this in. You never know though, we might be able to pull this one out and save that. Otherwise piece. I can always call up the Volkswagen here. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Go ahead and call them and see if it's installed. I wonder if they're are they open today? Yeah, Saturday they should be open. It's yeah. Good. They're open until like four. Yeah, they can stay a little bit early. Yeah, there's no way that this is going to be in stock. Oh, yeah, I can tell. But I think that was the one time Yuri was wrong this entire trip. The dealer did have it in stock. The only problem was it was just 90 miles away in Knoxville, Tennessee. They happened to have only one of the outer rear walls left. And luckily, Sean took one for the team and drove out and picked it up. Because without it, I don't think we would have finished this project in time. This is what, you know, this is what you get for buying Copart. I, I'm learning my lesson real quick. Right? Yeah? I'm learning my lesson. Are you liking real, it though? Like, is I love the building part, what, the part that I can handle, you right. know, but I'm learning you got to go in and physically, as I said, with my first couple of videos, you got to check it out yourself. Because, yeah. you know, anyone that, you know, pulled the bumper off, you would have seen and you would have known if you could handle it or not. But if you don't, pictures aren't going to do it. And Copart offers ways where they'll go and inspect the car yourself. You can pay like 150 bucks. It's not worth it. You gotta, you gotta be the one to go look. Oh yeah, for you sure. You have to be the one. So for anyone that wants to go do this themselves, no matter what anyone says, no matter what any YouTuber trying to be or is, go spend the money, fly out and check the car out yourself. Or if it's local, check the car out yourself, 100%. That's, that's about I, the best advice you can get when it comes to Copart and IA. I mean, take a look for yourself. The auction photos really don't look that bad in the rear. I know I'm inexperienced, but still. I even purchased Copart's additional inspection, which had someone physically inspect and take photos of the car, and you still can't see any of the damage that we're seeing now. Of course, now I realize it's all just a big scam. The inspection is ran through Copart, and of course, they don't want you seeing something that might deter you from bidding on their cars. Consider it lesson learned. So, uh, what I think we need to go ahead and do is remove uh, the rear muffler. I said rear muffler, as if there's a front muffler. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then we'll probably throw the tow hook in here. Conveniently, it got damaged on the tow hook side. So, we'll put the tow hook in here and we'll pull this uh, rebar out just a little bit and see what happens, see what it looks like under there. But it's, it's definitely a little worse than I thought it was because Hayden's had sent me pictures of it, but it's just like if you're looking on the auction, you really can't see exactly how bad it is. Uh, but I did know that we would need a, a frame rail end. So, you know, we, bought that, man. we got all that and hopefully maybe, maybe this would straighten out. Maybe we could separate it and uh, put it on, like beat it out from the inside or something. But the thing is, it's kind of a nice car. It can? Mm -hmm. It's the same shell. Call them up. You got their number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call them up. All right, so in order to pull out this rear part of the bumper and the frame of the car, I have to remove and strip down all the plastic stuff that you see here. Tail light, all the plastic trim needs to come off in order to pull it. Then we'll pull the rear reinforcement out and uh, we'll start making bits and pieces of progress that way. But I'm gonna start removing all this stuff right now. folded up in there pretty mangled up and the thing is is we don't actually have this floor pan for the trunk we weren't really planning on replacing it anyways probably should have but we are going to hopefully try and straighten it out but what I'm gonna do right now I am going to go ahead and do what I call a preliminary pull I'm going to just simply hook to this tow hook which conveniently they placed on the right side because they knew 
that this car was gonna get damaged right here and they knew I'd have to pull it. We're going to grab this tow hook and pull it out. I know that's probably all going to separate, but we need to do that to expose all the damages and hopefully we don't have any damages to the subframe or anything else that is you know, pretty important. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll see what happens. A preliminary pull is really just the first main pull you do to the car. You wanna to try to envision how the car was hit and pull it out the opposite way. Think of it like you were putting the accident in reverse. Pull it the wrong way and you'd be adding more damage, but pull it the right way and you'll actually be making progress. Bye, Steve. What's up? Hey, my lord. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to say it like that. That's like way beyond what I can just... Oh yeah, what you... Like you're looking at this in a way that I can do right now. And I'm trying to pick my brain on how to do it. Yep. Right now what we need to do, uh, we need to pull right here with the clamp and uh, straighten this out because this right here is not going to be replaced and we need this, this tail light and the lid to line up real nice. So before we cut the rear wall off, we want to go ahead and try to get this pulled out, you know, get all the measurements right. And then once that's good, we'll take the wall off and then we'll try to straighten out this floor. What do you think about all this? What is going through your head? You're seeing all this stuff, man. It's all, it's gotta be kind of crazy for you, know? I don't even know where to begin, dude. Well, it's, it's way beyond me. It's a skill that I don't even, I, years of just, the way you work, he just, just knows what he's doing. There's no like, it, he looks at it, I know how to do it. Check this guy's out. It's like it's brand new. Almost. Almost. <laughs> Almost. Just a I'm bit just more. in shock, look at that. We got a working door. Hey, wait till we get all this pulled out, then it's gonna be a working door with a factory door gap. Beautiful. With a few more pulls, Yuri was able to get the right quarter panel lined up pretty close to OEM spec. That's all that's needed now though, as we'll get everything perfect when everything gets replaced. Notice how he measures the car. This is to make sure that the right side is spaced the same distance as the left side, which wasn't hit. Once I got the all clear, it was time to wire wheel all the seam sealer off the car. This is to make it easier to remove the factory pinch welds that hold the rear wall onto the car. Once everything was wire wheeled off, Yuri did one last pull to straighten the floor by welding a metal plate to the rear apron. This was getting replaced anyway way with a factory OEM part, so it really doesn't matter if it gets damaged from the pulling and the welding. Now it's time to remove the rear wall. We had to remove the adjoining plates first by belt sanding down the pinch welds and then carefully chiseling the metal plates away from the car. Yuri saws all the rear wall off camera and then once both sides were removed, it was time to just yank the rear wall off the car. That happens. 
What did you hit? Oh! Right there, guys. That right there is the dangers of working at the shop. And I'm actually very surprised that these toolbox have been here for years and that hasn't happened yet. But, uh, yeah. You don't want that right there to be your face. Be careful and never ever walk behind the chain. Although I did let Hayden walk behind the chain today. I asked you to. Wait, how did it wasn't it? under tension though. Yeah, it was under it tension. Right there, though? You're supposed to have safety, like little safety cables on and that'll keep them from flying too far. But. Not, You're at 23rd garage, man. We don't, we don't use those. Yeah, and, that'll and, break and you. What's crazy is, look at this. Check this out. Oh, this one. You got it here too. How did you get it up there? This was dad. From, from, from over, over there. there to over here, yeah. So I'm, no, you could be right here getting a tool. And, and if it. you're not hey. paying attention, you're, you could be, you could look like that cabinet. <laughs>